I attended Mass every Sunday with my parents and my brothers and my sisters. I also attended a Catholic primary school. Um, this was my life, um, my upbringing, but I cannot re remember being aware in those early days that God loves me in the way I've come to know his love as an adult. Um, I must say that his love was not especially apparent to me from my experience in school. Now that didn't mean that I was unhappy at school. Um, it was, I think, mainly that my life was engaged with, with my friends, with my family, and although I was immersed in the faith, it didn't speak to me, or resonate with me, in the way of thinking, God loves me. Now that's a big um, admission. Um, and his love, and clearly he's loved me from, my, from the earliest moments of, of my coming into being. Um, but as a young child, and, and again reflecting on that period of time, I also served on the altar. Um, and, and again, the Mass was in Latin at that time. And so I was immersed in this. But I can't remember in those early days having that real awareness that God loves me. Um, and I say that with a great sadness. And when I reflect on other reasons, perhaps why that is, or was rather, um, I suffered, as I still do this day, I suffered at primary school around the age of 9, 10, with depression and anxiety, which has been part of my life throughout for all those many years since. Um, and I'm sure that would have impacted on my um, awareness of God's love because I felt within, although I couldn't share it with anyone because I didn't have the words to express it, but I, I just felt so distraught so regularly and I think I was just trying to survive. So I'm sure our Lord was knocking at the door of my heart and being with me in my suffering. Uh, but as a young child, I didn't feel that consolation and that comfort of our Lord's presence, although I know he would be with me. Um, may I also say that at that time in the life of the church, I was born in 1953, um, that our parish priests weren't weren't really open to 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 us as 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 children of our Lord. We I never felt that warmth, that um, comfort and consolation from the parish priests, uh, and indeed I think now. I'm an adult and looking back, I think that there was still this impact from the generations before of the Jansenist heresy, where there was such a focus upon earning your right to get to heaven, on being inadequate in order to, to do so. Um, and so that would have added to my feelings of um, isolation, I guess. And I haven't said this to uh, many people, in fact, I think probably two in my life. Um, I remember one Friday evening going to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation, um, and it was only known as Confession at that time. And I went on a Friday evening and it would show my mental state that on the Saturday morning I went again. And that's a great sadness for a young child. So 
I know now that always our Lord loves us so deeply. But my experience of it in those early days um, was was not was not good for me in growing in the faith. But I know now, and looking back, how our Lord held on to me and didn't let my hand go. And I'm so grateful for that. When it, it took many years uh, and into adulthood before and using the terminology of that personal relationship with our Lord, where our Lord, um, his presence is so apparent that it's not just at times of prayer, but it's throughout the whole day. And, um, and that came late on in life. Um, I, it became stronger, would be fairer to say, later on in life. But I remember even when I was first, um, first married, which is 45 years ago, 44 years ago, um, I remember being drawn to go to church, to mass, and in the week time. And I was drawn to, I used to go out on a Wednesday just to find and try and, and help and reach out to people. Now, all of this would have been from our Lord and from the Holy Spirit. So these things were taking place within me, but I, did, I don't think I, I felt or saw with clarity, and I think that's because of my own brokenness, uh, my own weakness and fragility, uh, and that depression and anxiety. Um, so I would say that it, I was becoming increasingly aware many years ago, but I was blinded to it, I think, because of my uh, internal difficulties. I remember, um, first of all, uh, something very clearly, my first Holy Communion and the joy that that gave me. Um, that, in well, I would have been about aged, say, seven or eight. Um, and then as I progressed through school, um, it was, I, I never thought that, I never thought that God had, um, God had forgotten me or, or God didn't love me anymore or, or, or anything like that at all. That's never been in my mind. Um, as I say, I, I, at primary I went to Mass regularly, I went in the week as well, uh, but, I, um, but I, I feel I knew of God, but I didn't know God as a basis of my life, as what I was just referring to. And my personal prayer life uh, wasn't, um, wasn't very strong at all um, at that point. But now I've never... Um, even in, in moments of, and, and, and even when he draws on the, the, the deep depression, I, I know that God is with me at all of those points. But that took a long time to realize. Um, but I've, ne I've never thought that God had stopped loving me. Um, it was just struggling to realize how much he did love me. Um, and, I, and for the reasons I've said, and also as a cradle Catholic, we can take so much for granted, can't we? It becomes um, a, such a part of your life, and, such, and in the early days, a routine in, in your life. And I didn't really appreciate the wonderment of, of the sacrifice that, of the Mass in a way which came to be um, over the over the years, where now it's the the central element of it's like if somebody says, "Do you need to go to mass?" You can reply, "Well, do you need oxygen?" As a backcloth to that, also in terms of my development in the faith, um, in my early adulthood, um, I found it difficult to go to mass, and I stopped going for. A short period of time when I was at college and in one sense it was I wanted to make the faith if I was going to continue with it my own as opposed to inheriting it in a sense uh, but I also knew at that time that 
I would come back to it because it just I just knew I would. So I had that short break of a num literally weeks and I also asked myself these, this basic question. Could our world, our very lives, um, the intricacies of the functioning of the body, the times, the seasons, could all this have been by chance? And the answer had got to be no, which is such a, a foolish thought. So when I confirmed again to myself, of course, there is God, then I asked myself this question, which you may find strange, but I did ask it. What do I want to be doing the day after I die? I asked myself that question. And these thoughts directed myself to our Lord, to my life in a more focused way and I came also to realize more strongly that our, our Lord was always beckoning me even when I didn't see it and I love the picture painted by Holman Hunt the light of the world and the knocking on the door of the heart uh, but the handle is only on the inside and and that spoke very powerfully to me but coming to um, examples of um, how God has shown his love for me recently, the sacrifice of the Mass, being present at the, the sacrifice of the Mass, which is represented at, for us in church, is, is, is just the whole essence of, of our being, of our life, and God's love for me. And coming in the Holy Eucharist, his, his suffering, coming as a child in his vulnerability. And that speaks and has spoken to me of his love. And especially that element to do with all of that suffering. And, I've, and knowing that he could, he loved me, uh, the Father loved us so much, he gave his only son. And, and, and it, that has struck such a chord and he's shown me how to accept the suffering in my life and to offer it to our Heavenly Father and, and that, that's, that is love knowing that he's with me when I feel great when I feel dreadful just knowing he's with me I'm not on my own and prayer the, the, the opportunity to to speak with him at any time in the day the opportunity that he gives us just to open our hearts and listen to him and when we feel so distraught we can't find words it doesn't matter just holding a crucifix or just w willing to be able to find words is prayer and all of that took me such a long time to come to realize and um, and everything there just speaks of God's love and I know that I'm okay even when I'm not okay and <laughs> now I'm fine and that is love you know that is love and the fact that he teaches us to love others in that same way not as we feel like not as we're treated by others but as he loves and of course he's, he teaches us that he will fill us with his love and we can we can then love in the way he wishes to um, it's so enveloping and it's so overwhelming um, and that is a, a daily reality for me and I'm so blessed I go to mass each day and I pray at home and I have, I have a set time in the morning or in the morning and in the evening and my family know that I'm at prayer and you don't do it for that reason but that witness to others without words gives our Lord the opportunity for his love to be shared with others and that that is wonderful um, the and again the the parish priest in, in 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 Stourbridge has given me a key to the church, so allows me to go and sit with our Lord at any any time, um, and and 
my family and others know of this and just by having that grace to be able to do that again speaks to people and we don't see the um, the response necessarily um, but that is our Lord's work and our Lord wants us to do these little things with love in our hearts and it's and in one sense in a very real sense it's good to know that we that, that I do this and I don't see that etc because we, we could end up feeling goodness me aren't I doing well <laughs> because we so well I am uh, you know so weak so still so full of of pride um, so still so filled with myself and it's laughable to think I could possibly still be doing that knowing that our Lord's love and and all the good that that I'm able to do uh, is our Lord's work through me and in practical ways I um, I talk to others about about our faith and I love to do that um, and to pray with others um, which which I love and I do that quite regularly um, uh, the, the giving people gentle prayer leaflets and rosaries and um, doing running little courses in the, in the parish and in people's homes um, I like Alpha and Divine Mercy and the um, 33 days to morning glory the 33 days to merciful love and this evening actually we're starting um, um, in preparation for this Saturday um, I'm, there are seven of us and we're going to be starting um, the first five first Saturdays together so that's that is just so so beautiful um, and the, the technology at the moment in the difficulty with the lockdown due to COVID-19 uh, the technology is enabling this to to, te to take place um, and and that's a wonderful blessing um, but I, I hope very soon that we're able to meet before our Lord uh, in in church um, and that would be so so wonderful so the little little bit that I do is is that small but it is that important that our, our Lord asks us to do our little bit and then our Lord takes care of everything and um, and so those little bits that I do um, I'm just delighted that I can hand it over to our Lord and hopefully more and more hearts will be opened um, now next week or even in their last days but it, that people's hearts will be open so that they too can fully appreciate the love of our Lord the different things that I'm engaged in with people and visiting people in the in the homes particularly those who live on their own those who are isolated and even more at this present time um, and and working a little also with the homeless in Birmingham those are wonderful um, practices and, um, and, and and ways of relating to our brothers and sisters um, I need to do much more than I do um, but I those are practices which I know our Lord uh, would want from me and and also never forgetting the our homes and our families and the the opportunities which that provides to bring the light of our Lord into the homes of my children and my grandchildren um, because at, at this point in time um, none of my family practice the faith um, so prayer 
and um, reaching out gently and and I think doing this on a on a on a daily basis I hope is showing to others that I am a child of God um, and and the welcome and the invitation is for us all and I also um, do say to people that I meet and particularly those who haven't been to church for a long time and very reluctant to do so I tell them that the church door is open for us all and people like myself who go through that door each day is wonderful but the door is open wider for those who don't um, and I will just share with you I there were two homeless uh, men in Birmingham and I spent some time and we went for something to eat together and I said that I was going to Mass and I told them where St. Chad's Cathedral uh, was in Birmingham and they asked if they could come and they'd been on the streets for years these poor men and um, we arrived at the church and mass began and w one of them was so tired that he couldn't stay awake and the other one they had the sh took the shoes off because they were ill-fitting and one of them needed the, the toilet which was right by the sacristy the front of the church and I was just so delighted to be able to um, guide him to the um, had to walk all the way up to the front of the church barefooted and and I thought you know you could see our Lord in him at that moment and and it was just so beautiful and this part isn't about me but it's about our Lord who can take any one of us and and especially I guess those who were broken which I am and when I came out and I I shared up different clothing and, and what have you one of the men said that's the first time I've been treated like a person for a long long time and uh, he, he kissed me and said I love you and the other man came over he put the bag down and he kissed me and said the same now that is all because I did a little bit and our Lord touched those people those two men their lives in their lives and that that is such a, a blessing so my journey with my faith has truly been a journey because sometimes we can think you're a cradle Catholic so you just carry on walking along that path and uh, from first hand experience it is not that it's every day isn't it saying to our Lord Lord please help me to serve you this day and help me to bring as best I can to play my part in bringing others to you